There we go. And let me just. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Sarithkin, and welcome to the Sisters Interview with my co host, Aishaxi, my sister. And tonight we're very um, lucky um, and honored to have their, ex their ex excellencies of Lionsgate, um, Kinnerick and Ariana. Um, welcome to both of you. Hi there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we've been doing sort of a series on um, Baron and Baronesses of Ontier uh, that have really kind of stepped up um, during the pandemic and have uh, built community. And you guys, your barony especially has done quite a bit. Um, so I would like to focus on that a little later, but we usually start these things with your origin stories. So if you can tell us how both of you found the SCA, that would be great. Sure. You were in before me. I so. was in, okay, I was in first. So um, I had never heard of the SEA. Um, and actually, my we lived in North Vancouver, which is where Gerhard and Amanda, the Baron and Baroness at that time, lived. And um, there was a demo at Lonsdale Key. And my mom happened to be passing by, and she saw it. And she came home and told me about it. And because I'm old and we didn't have Google back then, <laughs> I went to the library <laughs> and asked a librarian if she knew anything about the SCA. And she went through like a Rolodex and found a card that had uh, Gerhard and Amanda's name on it and phone number, amazingly, and gave it to me. Also would never be done this day and age. And I phoned and she told me about events that were coming up, invited me over to their house for tea, loaned me a gown. And I was in. That was like, that was it for me. That was in 1988, I think. It was 88. Yeah. Wow. A long time. That's amazing. And uh, for me, it was uh, 1990. And I came back from university. I was born in university in Ontario. And the girlfriend that I was seeing at the time said, hey, I found this thing while you were in university. And you need to come check it out. So I hopped on a ferry and went over to Salt Spring Island for Bitterwater's War. And yeah, and that was it. I was hooked. So does that mean that the two of you met in the SCA? We did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. So we met in uh, 92 yeah. at uh, Clinton. Ah. So. so for those who are not from uh, Ontier, um, and and some of us newer people that are that are that are from Ontier. Um, tell us about Clinton Moore a little bit. Wow, uh, <laughs> that's a big it, open question, huh? Well, I mean, when we joined, it was uh, a, a war between Vancouver and Calgary, yeah. so Mountain Guard and Lionsgate, and uh, it, it was it was magical. It um, really was because it was at the same site every time they had a, a full castle permanent castle that stayed there you didn't have to take it down and store it somewhere it stayed up yeah. it was wood uh they had a tavern they had uh, a bakehouse bath houses which they did beautiful murals on the walls around baths that were open to the sky it was it really spectacular wow and, and and people actually had their own areas like traditional areas where they would camp so when they set up, they already knew exactly where everything went and, and you could find other people because they would always camp there. And it's like going to a Walmart, you know, it doesn't matter where in the world <laughs> at a Walmart, it's laid out the same way. You always knew Clinton after Clinton, you know where everybody was and where you were going. And we saw it ebb and flow. I mean, there was as few as, you know, 400 people probably when we started. And I think it went all the way up to, I don't even know if it was that low. It went up to it was probably around 500 by the time we started. And uh, just, mm -hmm. it, it was just a different world, you know, the music and the drums and the, back then there were tiki torches everywhere. <laughs> there was fires <laughs> everywhere, you know, things, well, they had things were different. It was, it was, it was something. It was quite a magical time. Awesome. What part of the SCA drew you guys in? Well, for me, it was the heavy fighting. I was, I was like, I wanted to do that. And so Bitter Waters was in June and I was fighting by Clinton beginning of August. Wow. How did you get armor together? Uh, <laughs> I actually ended up 
meeting I had, it was a birthday party uh, for myself in July and friends of mine came and another friend of mine gave me a sword and they went and just cornered me after going, why did you get a real sword and, and, <laughs> and wanted the whole story. And so I told them about the SCA and one of them was a sheet metal worker. And so we didn't know how hard it was to make armor. And there was four of us and we're like, we're going to make four suits of armor by Clinton. Well, we got one. one. <laughs> <laughs> I got to wear it. <laughs> yeah. But hey, now that I look back, getting one made in a month. That was crazy. With none of us really knowing what we were doing was phenomenal. That's amazing. And that includes a helmet? Oh, yeah. I still have the helmet. It lives in Phoenix now at my parents' place. When I go down there to, I, I, to visit them, when they're because they're snowbirds although they're here right now literally they're right over there <laughs> <laughs> hi mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> um they uh they store oh, my old old armor there so you can and, do the type practice oh yeah and... so i go down there and clank out in the old armor and and people oh, go oh you're a newbie and <laughs> <you're> like, <laughs> yeah surprise <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, yeah. that's, that's really remarkable. Um, how about, I didn't answer just for me. Um, when I found the SCA, I was a dispatcher for the RCMP. Uh, so my world was police, ambulance, fire. It was very, very real, everything that I did. And when I went to the masked ball, which is the first event I went to, it was that bit of, dream and that bit of fantasy that I guess my life really needed. <laughs> it was just like magical again. <laughs> I'm going to use that word a lot. But yeah, that really drew me in that that I guess I really needed some balance in my life. So escape. <laughs> yeah, escape. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really difficult job. Yeah. Yeah. Um so early on did you have mentors that um kind of you mentioned Amanda Yes, uh, I am. Um, she is somebody that I've never actually met anybody like again. Um, and she <clears throat> was very, very inspirational to me. Um, so she's somebody that I definitely patterned myself after a great deal. Uh, she was always there to listen um, and advise. And I was very fortunate to to have her. Yeah, I feel very blessed for that. I didn't really have mentors per se. I was bouncing back and forth between here and Ontario. So cool. it was odd because of course I found the SCA, I went to Clinton, now I have a suit of armor. So I took it back to Ontario and went, there's gotta oh, yeah. be, there has to be the SCA there. And there was, and there was one fighter and she was ecstatic that I actually had armor. And I quickly found out that I needed to teach her <laughs> <laughs> and I'd only been fighting for a couple months. So, so I actually kind of became a fighting mentor over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when I actually left Ontario, my, my schooling was done. Yeah. They had six fighters. Yeah, that was the Canton oh, wow. Brave House. Yeah, yeah, that was Kingston. Yeah, Ontario. and it, it became quite uh, quite the active little they, community. That's why they gave me my award of arms to begin with, yeah. because I was raising fighters for their it was their awesome. Canton. So. How cool! So so uh, you started out with a combination of service and fighting. Yeah. Yes. Very much. Yeah, I was master of stables out there within no time. Mm -hmm. But when I came back here. It was work to make money for school, so yeah. I just went to events. I didn't have time to to do service here, right? But out there, I had lots of time to do service. It's just school. Why not? So, well, yeah, but after <laughs> yes. school, I mean, yeah, true. that's all we, we we didn't have anything else to do. So, except Dungeon Dragon. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you came back, did you eventually squire to somebody? I did. Uh, I was already a sergeant by then, um, 
the sergeantry of Lionsgate is, is always something that's been extremely important to me. Um, and when I was chosen to be a sergeant, I picked Griffin at Bedwear's belt. And his wife was like, hmm, I wonder what you're hinting at. <laughs> so I think within a year, I was his squire at that point. So uh, that's, that's who I was squired to. And that can, was... can you talk a little bit about sergeantry and your decision to go for it? Yes. Uh, when I was playing and fighting, the sergeants were the ones who were teaching people. Um, uh, the sergeants were very active in Lionsgate. Uh, we didn't have a huge amount of nights. Um, so the sergeants were the ones taking all the young people under their wing and teaching them how to fight. And, and I really liked that and I wanted to do that. And so I tried in 1999 and ended up not being successful. And then the next, oh, I didn't try out the, I didn't try again until two years later and then I was successful then. And so 2001, but um, I- Not easy. And I have fostered, uh, when, <clears throat> when I took men at arms, yeah. my, my deal with them was if they became a sergeant, I released them because now they're my peer. And my whole, goal in taking men at arms was to train them to become sergeants and lead other people and take their own men at arms and try to build up the sergeantry that way it, it meant a whole lot and still does mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, very important to me can, can you talk both as um going for sergeantry and being a baron and baroness now what sergeantry involves and what what um the station really means because i i think it has a lot of meaning, especially in your barony. Um, it has sort of a rich history there. Um, I, I, it's incredibly important to both of us. Uh, I think the sergeantry and our sergeants um, epitomize what is good to a great degree in the SCA. And I find that as the SCA evolved and we got more peers here, more knights here and whatnot, somehow they were a little overlooked in my opinion, undervalued. And it's something that has always been uh, a sore spot for me <laughs> because uh, I feel that they have to go through a lot and show skill in so many areas that they're just um, deserving of all the praise. It, it, they really put themselves out there. Like people have no idea what it involves and how many different areas they have to cover. And, you know, some people are shy. They don't wanna get up and perform in front of people. Some people can't dance. You know, we're asking them in so many ways to come out of their comfort zone, whether it is equestrian or whether it's uh, yeoman or gallants or, our courtiers are mm -hmm. amazing. Um, so I feel that they deserve much more respect and more accolades mm -hmm. than the SCA presently gives them. Yeah, I, anybody that's watching this, I would, I would highly recommend, even if you're just contemplating it, go to a sergeant's and a sergeant trials and talk to the, the, the testers, talk to the, uh, the people who are actually trying out are really focused. So yeah. maybe don't <laughs> talk to them, but. Yeah. But a lot of the uh, testers in between testing people will gladly sit down and show you how, what the testing oh, involves. Yeah. And, and so you can actually find out just how well-rounded these people so are. So much passion and so much enthusiasm for what they're teaching and, and just sharing with it, these people. It gives people such an excellent uh, foundation in, in what the SCA is. And in um, it, it's such an incredible... Um, starting off point, um, my, one of my apprentices, uh, my new apprentice who's newer to the SCA uh, is a, went through the sergeantry here in, um, what's my barony? Stromgard. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> 
<laughs> and um, I, I just think it's it's wonderful. Um, my husband was a sergeant uh, in Adiantum many, many years ago. And um, I, I think it's a really great way to get a good crash course um, in the SCA and also to start um, establishing those lifelong bonds and that sort of sense of family that you get in the SCA because sergeant tree trials are hard. Oh, yeah. It, it's a lot of information. It is. And you know, you're expected to maintain yourself and, and comport yourself forever, basically, in a certain way. And I find that they just really, really um, represent the barony amazingly well. I'm very proud of them. So were you all, did you also go through Sergeant Tree? Were you a courtier or? No, actually, no, I, uh, I never, never did that. I got an armor once and uh, had my ribs broken. So that was, uh, you know, that was it for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you were wearing Gerhardt. I was wearing Gerhardt's armor and had like no rib protection, but pish. Um, <laughs> So yeah, back then it was it was all. Uh, and you were you were service and. Yeah, I was I was service and yeah. And, and yeah, courtier would be something definitely that I would be interested in pursuing. Um, that would have been my thing, but it, it, it was fairly new. I don't think Yolande was really pushing you for that. No, I don't know. No. My uh, my pelican Yolande. How, how but yeah, so know? what's that? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so you, um, protege. Yes. Yes. Um, so Yolande was, is my, um, Pelican. And it's quite funny because, um, I was very shy and I probably wouldn't have ever asked anybody ever. Uh, and she is someone I had a great admiration for. Um, she is so intelligent, educated, organized. <laughs> um, and I am more a fly by the seat of my pants, uh, roll with the punches. Yeah, <laughs> let's see where we go. Um, and we recognize the opposite in each other. And she really flattered me. And it was a, it was very, um, very humbling, because she actually indicated that she really would be happy to take me on because she felt there were things that she could learn from me, how to be more relaxed, how to, you know, roll with the punches. And I absolutely knew that I could hopefully like learn something about being organized <laughs> and something about having, you know, a coherent thought process. She was, she's, she is so good at that. So it was, it was a good, uh, a good match. And I was not a protege. You were not a protege, but you could have been. Um, yeah. So uh, at September Crown in 2017, uh, my knight was walking past our encampment with his lady. And I walked up to them and, and uh, I said, I got a fruit fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay away from my drink. Um, I said to her, I said, well, you know, if I ever did decide to become a protege to a pelican, the only person I could think of was you, Katrin. And she kind of looked at me and says, do you, do you, do you want, want to? We could, we could do it we right do now. It. And I said, no, I don't think so. And to her credit, she did not push it because they had already had the meeting to decide to put me on vigil <laughs> like you to be a pelican. You would have been amazing at the shortest time. Oh, that would have been so good. So later that <laughs> day, I was offered to be a pelican. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was fun. Opportunity lost. Oh, well. So you're both pelicans. Um, what are your service geeks? Uh, well, me, it's the marshalling community. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I'm, I'm working, I'm still a junior thrown weapons marshal, working on my senior for that. And then after that, I need rapier and cut and thrust and I will have, well, an equestrian and I would have everything. So you? For me, it's uh, event stewarding and retinue. Uh, did a lot of retinue. Uh, <laughs> head of retinue. Um, really enjoyed it. Really love it. 
uh, and event stewarding. I, I just have a real passion for, I just like putting something together that people come to and it brings them joy. So I, I really, really love both of those things. And that takes some organization. You must have learned something. I know. I must have learned a little bit of something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I still fly by the seat of my pants. So, <laughs> so were you um a uh it, it, Let's organize our thoughts. Um, so you live in a place that there are three levels of royalty. You you have the Baron and Baroness, you have Prince and Princess, and you have uh, King and Queen. So were you, did you sort of go from one to the other and learn or how did, you, how was your, what was your journey like uh, doing retinue? Oh, um, I did pretty much everything at a principality level. Um, and when my past Prince and Princess when they became king and queen, then I did it at a kingdom level. Um, I don't know why, but I, I just never felt um, as accepted at a kingdom level. Um, I've been in the SCA for 30 some years and I don't think most people have a clue who I am, uh, <laughs> but I feel very worthwhile and acknowledged at a principality and baronial level and that's where I, I love to play so yeah we I love on tier but I just feel a little lost mm -hmm. in on tier so for Savrick and Dalla when they were prince and princess I was their captain of the guard and, and you were their head of retinue mm -hmm. and they had released us all oh, the right. weekend before crown and he won yeah. And so we all just we rolled, rolled right back right in over. and handled everything for Let's him go. for the rest of that event. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. That's it's one of the benefits of doing it back to back like that. Yes. Yeah. The drawback is uh, that's a lot uh, for a really long time. <laughs> well, the, the nice thing is, is, is after that event, they chatted with us and. Oh, and, yeah. And we, we didn't end up staying as the heads him. because we were like yeah and we, we no. didn't have any experience at a kingdom level and they had not been king and queen before so we we i don't remember what i did i think well, i was savrick actually put me as second in command for the kings or for the for the guard yeah and he said well look at that way if if the 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 head guard isn't there you can run it well and i made sure i went to every event in case Ulfgaard <laughs> didn't show up. Oh, and it's Ulfgaard showed up to he everything. everything. <laughs> so I never got the so. <laughs> yeah, but no, they were very considerate and they were very kind about the whole thing. And uh, I learned a lot. It was, it was really, it was a lot of fun. They've all been fun. And I've enjoyed, um, I've enjoyed everyone I've worked with on, on Retinue. So it's been great. And did that prepare you to take on the job of Baron and Baroness? And, and how do you think it prepared you? For, you for being for retinue? No, um, no, no. Just by being on a retinue and seeing the way the prince and princess, the king and queen, how they could port them. And so on. I guess. It helped us. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been not interesting. As, not as much as I would like. Yeah. I still feel like a little lost doing what I'm doing. Um, I would, I'm, you know, I worked a lot in theater, like a lot of us did. And I was backstage all the time. And I feel like that's what I did. And now I am on the stage and it's a lot of the time it's like, you know, lights. <laughs> um, so, uh, so did it help me as much in that way as I would have liked? And uh, no, <laughs> I would like, I would like to feel a little bit more at ease than I do, but uh yeah, no, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I, would, you know, I guess what I was getting at is um, I kind of look at um, the being Baron and Baroness as, as kind of being the go between between the crown and the local populace. And it, it, it seems to me that um, a couple that has served on Royal Retinues has, has more of a feel for. Um, where the king and queen might be coming from yes absolutely mm -hmm. that that definitely has helped hugely i yeah. mean we're in the unique well semi-unique position along with Seagard, in that our prince and princess are in between us and the crown so it kind of gets filtered through them a lot of the time and, and um i mean in in recent time 
our king is from Lions. Yeah, that happens. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah. seems to go on and on and on forever. <laughs> uh, but uh, one thing about the barony, I remember talking with um, uh, Duchess Megan, and she was saying, oh, do you have a big ret to, to do all this, the stuff you need doing? And I looked at her and said, no, we have one person. She went, you have one? Because of course she's been queen a couple times. And so she's like, you got to have this big ret. I says, we have an officer corps. Yeah, they're amazing. And we have Our, a sergeantry. And a sergeantry. Our, Our courtiers are... We, we really don't need the no. ret. The, the, the officers and, and the sergeants, sergeantry handle so yeah. many things for the so barony fortunate. that we don't i mean you yeah. don't really need retinue we we have retinue now because people um very graciously said, oh, yeah, insisted you must you. <laughs> so but we really don't but like now to... we have two instead of one. Oh no we have a lot more we have like five or six now. <laughs> oh okay um but it, um I she like doesn't to, tell me anything. i like to share i don't want to tax anybody too much so we were pretty self-sufficient and um COVID has been quiet, but after, <laughs> after that, when we go back to events, you know, we want people to enjoy the event and, uh, and we are, we're pretty good at taking care of ourselves. So. Well, and I find that there is a certain breed of person that, that can't enjoy the event, event unless they have a job. Um, yeah. So I try to get new people involved. If I see yeah. somebody new at an event, I, I, I love new people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's almost, you can see, you can that, that can't enjoy the event, the event unless they have a job. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, I just saw the link was there and. and oh, you clicked on it? I, I, I had to quickly click the mute button. <laughs> um, when I, you, you see the SEA th through new eyes again. And I love that. Um, the SEA has done so much for me in so many ways, and I'm very enthusiastic about it. And when a new person comes, I just want to share all the things and, and involve them as much as I can. So yeah, I love new people. <laughs> yeah, we were actually given um, uh, a silver wing. Yeah, so we are the, the, premier. the premiers of the order. We were giving it at the same time yeah. uh, by Savarkandala. It's a, a principality award for helping newcomers yes it's a oh, wing wonderful you under your wing so that was a tremendous honor wonderful so what um how, how did you become interested in taking on this role of baron and baroness how well, did that come about well for me i love lionsgate i have lived here the entirety of the time that i've been in the sca in in different areas within lionsgate but always within lionsgate knowing Gerhard and Amanda, seeing how well the barony works together. The entire barony is about inclusivity and, and sharing. How do you not be enthusiastic about that? How can you not want to have an opportunity to be a part of that and to continue that tradition? So we, we did try once before, um, I'm very glad that it, it didn't happen when it did. Our children were quite a bit younger and now they're adults. Uh, so I did feel that it didn't, it's no longer taking away obviously from the kids and whatnot. It, it was a perfect time. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I mean, I I'm actually, just loving every minute of it. I actually wanted to before that, but um, my night and his lady decided that they were gonna run. Oh yeah, we didn't want to run against them. I wouldn't run against my yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Basically, we joined the SCA and decided when we grow up, we want to be there in the So we've talked a lot about Amanda and Gerhard Kendall. And for people that aren't familiar with the history of your barony, um, can you talk about what their role was oh. in the barony? If you had told me that I'd be wearing the regalia of Gerhard when I joined, I would have said you were crazy. Yeah, you're. you're, so you're he's going to be here forever. And, and he, he, it was, it was 25 I mean, years, I believe. Yeah. I think yeah. The second longest baronial couple in yeah. the known world. Yeah. So it was, it was interesting. I mean, of course, when we joined, they were, they were here. So we've seen all of the different baronial couples and, and they've all had different strengths to offer to this 
great barony, but Gerhard and Amanda were were a class act, and yeah. they were yeah. as teachers, as as just mentors, uh, um, just confidants, just so accepting and so loving of their populace. They 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 lived the SEA, you know. So. Yeah, they really did. So, so they were the founding Baron, Baron and Baroness, right? And, <clears throat> and they remained Baron and Baroness for did you say twenty five years? I believe it was, it was around years. there. Yeah. A, a raft of people will say I'm wrong <laughs> in the chat if, if I am, but I think it was twenty five. Yeah, that's until a, his his health finally yeah declined. Finally, yeah. forced them to step down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh i mean I, I talked about clinton and uh when clinton was no longer sca uh the reason we went back was for uh amanda's yeah. memorial yeah and uh i mean they were i mean they were both lions oh yeah um, at least though so. yeah and uh, just, just such, a, such incredible people. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were the driving force for the for anterior West War. Yeah. Although it wasn't called anterior West War back then, it was Lionsgate versus a barony in the West, and they met in the middle. Yeah. And it eventually became anterior West War. They were very, very. <laughs> I'm going to try to say this without crying. So uh, Gerhard was very ill and uh, he was at an event and he had a, a bunch of things. He was selling things. It was a way for him to sit and greet people, but not have to be too, too active. And, you know, this is a man that should be worried about his health, his mortality, his, but he took me aside and he said, I have something here for you and I need you to do something for me. <laughs> You're trying, you can go get there. <laughs> and uh, he gave me this beautiful pewter cup. I'll have this any second, hold on. Finish? <laughs> I tell it better, so no. <laughs> so um, he said, um, I want you to take this cup and um, because I probably am not going to be here when it happens but when <laughs> when Kinnerick is finally um put on vigil for knighthood i would like you to give this to and tell him that you know i always <laughs> knew that it would happen <laughs> and i wish i could be there <laughs> <laughs> he was he was very special he um i barely knew him um but i had two really meaningful encounters with him and i think i was at that event where he was giving things away yeah. and i um i do a persona that not a lot of people do and he brought me a very rare book um, the, uh, men's Scythians and Greek book, and it still has his name and his handwriting in it. Um, and he said, I, I want you to have this, um, what you're doing is really special. You know, he was just very encouraging and yeah. loving and, um, exactly. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, I'm from way down South in the other Vancouver, <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you know, he, he hardly knew me and uh, just very special. He made me feel special. It's, it's so. interesting you should say that because he, he, was, he was very observant. And, and, then and he would, he would I, the two of them together would, would look at the barony and see who was in it. And he used to do a Christmas oh, yeah. gift list. list. Oh. And barony was smaller then, <laughs> but it was personalized and each person, yeah. I mean, they didn't actually get the it item, was but it was, words. it was what you were going to, what you should get for Christmas. Yeah. And, and it, it was all personalized. Everybody in the on. barony. Yeah. I mean, uh, they, just, their superpowers were um, really seeing people yes. and making you feel seen. 
um, which is uh, really rare, I think. Um, and what a thing to aspire to and um, for them to lead by example and to leave that kind of legacy in your barony. I mean, it's amazing in this game how things linger with people. I mean, I still have people come up to me, fighters, and I'm just like, I'm trying to remember who they are. And they're like, you, you, you're the first person <laughs> yeah. to put a sword, sword in, my, in hand. my hand. And I'm like, I remember that. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing the impact you can have on people. And, and they certainly did. So I could only hope to even be a fraction of that. Well, let's transition a little bit <laughs> now that we've gone into the crying space. <laughs> um, what what made you decide to to go ahead and go for Baron and Baroness, and what were your goals heading into it? Hmm. I, I think we felt that we were in a good place for it, and mm -hmm. that we had enough to offer that. It, we could actually maybe be a benefit. Um, and we loved the Baron. That was, I think, the, the guiding force, wanting to do something to um, not necessarily make it better, but keep the whole traditions and, and what Lionsgate was alive. And to be a part of that, I think, was, was a big thing for both of us. What was the second part of the question? <laughs> uh I think you answered both parts. You answered both. Oh, ones. yay me. Okay. So, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was interesting when we ran because the couples we were running oh, yeah. against, we were all like, but you're great. Yeah. Like, oh, we have the best people and we'd all been in for so long. This, this oh, last time. yeah. I mean, it was, it was funny because uh, uh, Larrick, he's like, well, I've been in for... 25 years and, I'm, and I looked across the board and I said so you've been in the least amount of time, time out of all and of he's us. like what yeah. it was wow. a great group that's yeah. so all of the couples were were more than qualified to to wear this yeah and Saverick and Dalla because they knew that we were we were all such close friends mm -hmm. they they came to fight practice and they called all the three couples into a separate room Mm -hmm. And they told us that we had won, and the other two couples were like, "Yay!" And we all, it was a big uh, it group was, hug. It was wonderful. So it was it was just so fun, and and this barony is it, is really great. It's it, it, it's hard it, to find. It doesn't have a sometimes. lot of things that are broken no. that need fixing. No, like so. are you should you should come to our council? <laughs> <laughs> We just sit around and, well, now Zoom around, um, <laughs> and we just get things done. Like, it's just wonderful. Great, great, wow. great people. Great officers. We're very lucky. That's wonderful. So how, how long have you been uh, sitting Baron and Baroness at this point? We November. stepped up in November 2018. Yeah. So we had from November 2018 until March of 2020, 2020 and then yeah. uh, COVID hit, which is why we decided to... Uh, Re up we decided to um ask to do it again mm -hmm. um our plan was only to run one term originally was to run but one we term, yeah. we didn't even get a year and a half <laughs> no and the only reason for our thoughts of running one term is just that there were so many other people that could do this job beautifully mm -hmm. well and we'd be happy to see them as our baron and baroness yeah. but having only done not even a year and a half we we wanted more <laughs> <laughs> And you got it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. I hope so. so how did you pivot when the um, pandemic hit? Well, actually, I mean, mm -hmm. we watched all of our events just get canceled. Yeah. And it was it was extremely disheartening to see all that. Um, and then it was it was uh, Marina that suggested it wasn't it by sea lion yeah I believe so, so uh I marina was our our seneschal she was our seneschal then. yeah, yeah that's she was our seneschal. to say one thing i yep. think like a lot of people when this began i don't think we realized the full magnitude and length of time that this would be uh so i think a lot of we we didn't do 
like right off the bat. We didn't just go right out there and, and start doing things. Cause I think we all had it in our mind that, eh, you know, yeah. this will pass. It'll be, it'll be over so okay. shortly. And then, uh, you know, months passed and it, it hadn't. And then Maureen had this great idea. Yeah, I think so she was the start of it. You should we, do. We normally have a, a war with Seagirt. Uh, and so it's sea lion war. And that obviously wasn't happening. So we decided to have an online Facebook sea lion war. Yeah. So I think Maureen mentioned this on the Thursday. And I, we kind of thought, oh, well, how are we going to do that? And, and I we think, contacted the Baron and Baroness over there. Yeah, like Thursday and we said, night. hey, we think we should do this. It'll start tomorrow. We'll run it. You guys just need to be involved. Yeah. <laughs> so we had, uh, we called it Sea Lion, the War of Words, uh, because we were online. What else could you do? And because even at that point, through work and whatnot, people were really Zoomed out. Uh, people were on the computer a lot. We didn't want it to be something that was live that people had to be there for. So what we did was we started up a Facebook page and it was all posts. So people could be off all day. They could go to work, do and whatever catch they up. and then catch up when they got there. So the first year we had, um, Oh, we had Bardic. People actually recorded themselves and posted it. We had a lion in any medium who, <laughs> who was won by my son, who has like this glorious mane of copper hair. And somebody caught a picture of him flinging it. And that was just judged by the amount of likes per picture. Um, it was a lion or an orca. Sorry, secret in any medium. And uh, the war of words part was poetry oh. that the barons posted whenever they had it and they were armed by their populace so they could so, send it to us yes and we would vet it through the other yeah you just want to make sure there's nothing make sure it was okay or, and, and then we would post, post it. it so it was this volley of of poetic words back and forth we had haikus we had limericks we you know we had the whole thing and the judges that we found for some of these things we had uh yeah, martin and steer car steer car yeah. um just great people that just said oh sure i'll oh, come and, and have a and look the siege cooking the siege cooking how do you do siege cooking online you know what you do you <coughs> get each barony to come up with a recipe you find people that are willing to cook it in their homes and then decide on a winner so they did it was just it was <laughs> it was awesome and the page is still up for people that want to see it from the first year and because we did yeah, it again, we did not think we were going to have to do it. We, the were, we did year. not think, but we did. But we did. So we did it again online, and that was brilliant as well. Different, um, different battle points uh, to some degree, but still a lot of fun. And and Bardic as always, just because so, it was the a, a video part, so that part was really fun to see what people came up with. That's so it was good. So yes, we did that. That's wonderful. And, and just by the seat of your pants. I mean, just, just kind of last minute, let's do this thing and make it happen. Yeah, the, well, the very right. first time, it literally started Thursday night. I found judges Friday. Uh, and then people posted things like on, on Friday night or Friday afternoon, we're on the ferry. See you soon. You know, <laughs> just, it, was just, and it was just, it was delightful. And it, people were very engaged. So yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun. Very cool. And then Lion's Den came later. Lion's Den came later. That came started in October of 2020. Mm -hmm. And that was all um, the, the person who brought that to us was Duchess Kiva. Uh, without her, none of this would have happened uh, <laughs> at all. Um, she came to me and said that uh, Terra Primaria had been doing these classes online and she'd seen them and she thought they were wonderful. And she asked uh, if they would mind if we did something similar and they very graciously, you know, gave us their, their teachers list and oh, they were just so awesome. Anyway, um, she just ran with it. And um, De Morwina, of course, was involved, our Seneschal, um, his Lordship Kevin, um, uh, it's a really hard name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Garbit, who Andreas, I think that's it. Uh, so uh, hugely integral part, uh, Lord uh, Nergui, who is our deputy seneschal, uh, Master Jure was involved. He's now uh, not here as much, so he's 
but oh my gosh, what we would have. He's a Sergeant Armeritus. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. To boot. Uh, <laughs> and Sir Antonio. I mean, all these people have just been why Lion's Den was successful. And of course, all the people that agreed to teach and do the panels. It's just been amazing. And just seeing people involved. It, it's been awesome. I've loved it. We've been to all of them. Yes. And Duchess and, uh, Kiva feeds me words to yes, do my introductions. Yes, the intros. You wrote but one or two. And I think I Sir wrote Antonio yeah. wrote one. But Kiva, oh my gosh. She's written all the yeah, rest. She's and, just a and great she's amazing with it. Yeah. So. yeah, I don't know where they find the time. They're, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, they're super I mean, parents. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. That's wonderful. Um, and what is the future plan for that? I, right now, I think we're scheduled through to the end of October, the thought being that we would like to do a year. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure if we're going to continue with something every Sunday, but the thought was that we fully intended to have um, special sessions when we had something that we wanted to um, educate people, entertain people, um, and... Uh, I'm, I don't know quite how often that will be, but uh, I'd very much like to see it continue. Mm. Has there been a sort of a discussion amongst um, the populace and the people running it about what people are interested in or how to, um, I don't know, uh, bring people in and pique their interests, I guess? I don't Yeah, I find Kiva really had um, her finger on the pulse, so to speak. Uh, she spoke to a lot of people. She got a lot of, of feedback from people. And that's a big part of what uh, drove her to, to choose and try to find uh, instructors and speakers um, in the subjects that she did. You guys have done some really, um, some really cool subjects too. Uh, some of the stuff Antonio has done has been very sort of esoteric, yeah. but um, very, <laughs> um, very, very mind opening, I guess. Very Antonio. Very yes. Antonio, yes. <laughs> For sure. A little yeah. hint of sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> Just a hint. Yeah. I always have to read things he posts a couple of times to kind of like, okay, where are we with this? Yes. yes. <laughs> How should I? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Which is great. It keeps me on my toes, right? Absolutely. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, what else is on our list? Well, I, I was going to say, are you still the kingdom protector right now? I yeah. am. Yes. Forever. And I will be until September. Yeah. Okay. Next year. Yeah. He's liking that. <laughs> I do like it. He yeah. likes it. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of neat, <laughs> but it'd be nice to, to go here. It's your turn now. Like, <laughs> I don't think so. It's a really nice haversack. And oh, they, I would miss the haversack. Yeah, see? <laughs> yes, that's true. How, yeah. how did you get into um, doing the, the Kingdom Protector stuff, the throwing weapons and stuff? We love our uh, Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I bought my bow at Penzik in 93. Three, and it's the same bow and I, I love it uh, and I loved archery and then uh, I did combat archery uh, although crossbow at the time before everything all changed and then after it all changed I didn't get back into it for a while and then uh, uh, I started getting back into it and and really enjoying it and um, I'm I'm Ar Arcarius to uh, Alora, and uh, who has never been kingdom protector. <laughs> she's not. So, she's not bitter. Not bitter at all. <laughs> <laughs> she was so sweet about it because she oh. competed against you at that one. She right? did. Yeah. She did. She was in that tournament. But she was so, very proud of him. So. Um, and then thrown weapons. I. I just, I love it. Yeah, I, does. I, I'm really enjoying. You know, weapons. what do you want for Christmas? Throwing knives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, and then the next year you got me uh, a spear. spear. So now I, have, now I got the full thing. So yeah. uh, do, you, do you have a little range in your backyard or I anything? Do. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, and it gets used every fight practice. fight practice. It's awesome. So 
it's uh so it's we, a lot of fun yeah throwing weapons at the side of the house and oh and then i, I have a combat, combat archery, archery in, in the front, the front yard, yard. <laughs> rape here in the front yard heavies on the long driveway so so it's good. nice when and did you have, start having fight practice at your house oh that's oh, a good question we were trying to think of that yeah i'm gonna say seven years yeah probably wow. we used to so at the bottom of the hill is where fight practice used to happen and then they kept upping their price until they priced themselves out of our reach Range, yeah so in the summer they would even charge us because we want we needed the bathroom so they would charge us 50 75 whatever it was just to unlock the bathroom for us to use to fight outside but then in the winter that that place ended up finally going up to 150 dollars a night and we only charge five dollars yeah for... we weren't getting 30 people all the time so. yeah so we ended up so I said, well, why don't we just have fight practice up here? And uh, I mean, it was, it's only a five minute difference, mm -hmm. not even yeah. from where it was. Yeah. And, uh, and so then we kept doing it there in the winter, but it, it was too unsustainable. It just kept price. getting So we higher found another place we did. out across the street. But, you know, attendance, but, like, you know, any practice is erratic it ebbs and flows and um so we decided if it was here during the good months and people paid like they normally do but we didn't charge then the money from it could offset any losses that we would have in the winter and it's worked out really well mm -hmm. it's been it's been really good but yeah i think it's been around seven years something like that wow. and uh and when when we reopened in july we had 40 people at the oh, first yes. practice. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a big we're on half an acre so there's lots of room for everybody and but um and, and to keep safe lately the practices i i, I feel sorry for the unbelted yeah because <laughs> there's like six or seven nights, nights. and two or three unbelted <laughs> okay. yeah i don't feel sorry for them that is like great for them <laughs> yeah that's the dream that's the dream <laughs> true, true. Yeah, and, and of those nights, I mean, you've got Saverick and Ulf, and so you've got a couple Dukes, and yeah. and uh, sometimes Viking shows up, the prince himself, and, and then the king, and so it, it yeah, it, it can be quite the practice here. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of kind of practice where you all push each other to get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but having having practice at your house every week is quite a big undertaking and commitment. Um because I'm imagining that the bathroom is yours, right? And so people yeah. are inside your house. And um, so ha is that something that you knew signing up for it, that it was going to, or? Yep. We were, we yeah, were, we, we were have no fine problem with, with any of that. And during uh, this time, um, we've implemented cleaning procedures and, and different things like that to make sure people are safe. We have like the antibiotic, I don't know, antiseptic, wipes uh you know to clean the bathroom in between uses and you know anything we can do but i it's it's really something i enjoy tremendously it, it's not work at all and we asked before the mask thing before the masks were reintroduced in in our province uh we asked people if they were using the bathroom or anything to please be masked in our inside house. yeah uh and we also as homeowners, we're allowed to say, don't come here if you're not vaccinated. We asked people, we didn't say that. <laughs> we <Yeah>. asked people <laughs> to please make sure that they had had at least two, two weeks past their first vaccine when we reopened Yeah. Um, for this. So, and now the SCA has said. Yeah, now the SCA said we can. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. But uh, people were amazing. Uh, so cooperative and I don't know. So well, I'm sure just thankful to have a place to be together and, and do the thing, right? Yeah. And it's it's just, I mean, we built a we we built a porch. Um <laughs> Kendrick built a porch for me, an 18 by 9 porch on the front of the house, which uh has become the peanut gallery for <laughs> watching anything outside or um collegium comes and plays music on the porch and uh, people working on different art projects. Um, on uh, Saturday, we have um, Scribal. So 
they were setting up pavilions in the front yard and and people are coming to work on scrolls for us and so she uh, got her deck because of covid i got my deck because of covid <laughs> <laughs> so there's one plus but she was like why didn't you build this years ago i'm like because i was busy <laughs> and now i wasn't so. everyone needs a big covid project <laughs> yes <laughs> it keeps the sanity so um as things are opening up, how what is the plan going forward? Um, well, to keep everybody safe and to open as uh, directed by both the SEA and the government, um, to count the days until we can actually be together and see each other and squish each other's little faces um, <laughs> again. Uh, I miss people so much. <laughs> I might keep you, here. Well, you guys have actually had an event, right? We were talking about that a little bit before. Yeah. We did. Yeah, we, did. we had so, a park event, day event. Yeah, and everybody was, um, we had uh, one entry so that there was screening to get in. And, and uh, the, there was issues because it's, a, it's also a public, public park. park. So, so we were so. trying to make sure the public was safe and and but not endangering us also and it was it, it was worked, a bit of, it it worked was, really well our, our it, team was amazing it was hard on the event team uh her ladyship jacqueline um and uh Nirgui again they were just outstanding in their safety protocols and and what they went through to make sure that the parks was was happy and that everybody was safe both sca and uh the general public they did a tremendous amount of work so when when at court we had people come up to uh, to swear to enter our champion lists uh, uh, to try to make everything light I created a 16 foot long spear so people could so that it was all out. the way down court so everybody could be socially distanced didn't have to be too close <laughs> it was it was good shtick it was fun. it was it was a lot of fun. yeah awesome. yeah no it was a wonderful event it was outside it rained I didn't care best event ever <laughs> and 170 so people 170 yeah. people yeah, fortunately good. it's it was spacious and we had heavy fighting we had rapier we had archery we had thrown weapons we had scribal table we had herald table it was something for everyone it was yeah. it was so exciting to be there and warner look park which is where it was is like our ancestral park it's where so many of the lionsgate events started so it was amazing for it to be our first event back wonderful very cool Wonderful. And there, we have another event coming up soon. Yes, yes, yes we do. <laughs> also in Lionsgate. That's going to be something. Yeah, that'll be, what, the fourth crown we've had? In, yeah, I think it's the fourth crown. In four years? Or, yeah. No, I guess more than that now. So uh, that's going to be... Six years? It's going to be a different one, but uh, looking forward to it. And, and, and that's... The, the same people that... Uh, did sort of the the check-in for your event are going to be doing that for crown as well correct i believe uh jacqueline uh, yes. is involved but it's uh and angela too it and it, yes and it actually but, actually a angela's running oh well there you go so yeah angela's running the screening table yeah uh and she's one of the people that run the screening table here so yeah awesome, awesome. and we're pre-regging people because that gives us a control of who's coming and whatnot I should say it's Javais or, or yeah. Or did she change it? No, I don't. Sure. I think it's Javais. <laughs> Angela. Angela. Angela Gallant is her yeah. is her uh, her modern She's name. She's amazing. And and for the Americans coming up, you did a special um, lion's den on yes that we participated in. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, that uh, talked about the requirements because it's it's a lot of hoops to jump through. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So from what I gather in the States, if you do not need it, if it's just for funsies that you want to get tested for COVID, you have to pay for it? No. Oh. Um, if, 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 if you want to set up your tests like way in advance, you're going to have to pay for it. Um, okay. But you can set up a free test um, a week in advance. Oh. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh there's a woman down here who is a travel agent um mundanely 
And she sent out a list of a whole bunch of places that people can check out to get free tests. Awesome. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. that is so good. Yeah. yeah, I would hate for that to be a reason for people not to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. No, I, I don't think, uh, I, I think it's a lot of hoops, but I think it's worth it, so. Yeah, I, I think the really kind of daunting part is that there's all these things you have to do and the Canadian website and the testing places won't let you do them until 72 hours before. I know. So right. You're like just hoping that everything comes together in that 72 <laughs> hours before. Um, yeah, pretty brutal. So as a planner, that, that does not jive with my personality. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys would be great. Like, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> We still can't come down there. So. Yeah, so you guys are going to have to come see us soon, I hope. We well, can you fly. can fly. I mean, I, yeah. Twelve Mine, the good thing about 12 Mine is it's right across the street from the airport. airport. So if, if our government doesn't pull its head out of its whatever um, <laughs> and open the border, um, there's still a way to participate. Get down True. right now. We, we have a room. We're ready. 12th night. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Um, do you have any other questions? Yeah. Is, are there other things that you guys, um, want to accomplish in the SCA that you haven't done yet? You know, didn't somebody ask us a question about what do we want to change in the barony or what? <laughs> and it's like, you know, we love the barony. Uh, we love the people in the barony and I, I, I don't know more of the same. Um, making our events bigger and funner and um are you asking for for the barony or are you asking for us personally yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I, I think it's it's keeping keeping it the same but better like on the same track you know keeping lines of communication open keeping you know including people being really receptive and responsive to newcomers um all of those things that we we do and that i would just like to continue doing and to keep doing it better and better as as uh as whatever needs arise as for personally uh we'd love to be prince and princess yeah <laughs> it's on the list you know that could have <laughs> i mean when 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 kenrick won prince of the summits I was like, oh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. That would be good shtick. You're Kenrick. And I made it to the finals. Yeah, Prince Kenrick and Prince Kenrick. <laughs> would have been awesome. But yeah. And, and personally, you're gonna be fighting in Crown as well. Correct. Yes. Correct. Awesome. Yes, and uh, I'm not sure if steer car is gonna be there, so I might be at the front of the line. Yay. <laughs> one time that well one of the times that we were there and we were going to be like right near the front of the line that was the year they decided to reverse the order yes so we, uh, <laughs> yeah it's like are you serious morgan like, decided he was, was going to so reverse funny. it so. we just looked at each other and trudged off <laughs> <laughs> funny. oh it's funny though christian was at the end he was behind us yes. he was champion that's true yeah that's true but yeah but yeah i mean COVID has been difficult, um, but it's given lots of opportunities too, in some ways I have found. Um, learning how to be in touch with each other online. Uh, I have never texted, phoned, or messengered so many people in my life. I want to make sure that people are okay. Um, people, we, we know, and we know, all know people that have tended to, you know, internalize because of COVID and just trying to make sure that that everything is okay as far as that goes. And I have found that Zoom, regardless of that, some people are burnt out, has been helpful in that. It has um, given people a way to connect. And we and didn't know how to use Zoom or We didn't. Teams we started with Teams and, and we switched to Zoom so we could have more people and it's really easy to use Zoom. So that's been amazing. Uh, we've been able to support other branches by having a Zoom account that, that don't. And that's been so worthwhile. Um, online ANS gatherings where people just sit and chat and, you know, having that connection still. And um, after, like, I, I'm really hoping some of the stuff that we're learning and doing from COVID does stick. Like, 
I am fine having meetings online, like council meetings. I rather than have to drive an hour or whatever to get to it. Uh, I peerage think meetings. peerage meetings, I would love to be able to meet more often and have it not necessarily take up a big amount of time at the event or, you know, at least if we do the pre chat beforehand, that would be amazing. Um, it allows more people to come and be involved. Our councils have been bigger because people that didn't have the time to get home from work and get there, people with physical uh, limitations that can now get to it. So they've been really some positive things from this. So uh, I've, I've enjoyed all of that. Learning all the intricacies of Zoom and, and all that is, I mean, it's, it's definitely helped. I'm technically challenged. So it's... <laughs> I mean, I mean, normally I don't have the banner here. I have a, a virtual. Oh, yeah. But we found that the shiny coronets make the tops of our heads disappear. So yeah. we just look like we, yeah, this, uh, it's you get that. this weird floating head thing going yes, on yes, yeah. with the whole top half of our head missing. It's not a pretty sight. No. That's why we don't do the virtual backgrounds either. No. So, so speaking of this banner. <laughs> oh yes. The banner. Yeah. Oh yes. Did oh, you get an answer about it? I did, um, but only from one person, lots of people worked on the banner so um collaboration mistress katrin did the lettering for example um yes. but i'm not sure who organized it and of all the people i have messaged that is the only answer i've gotten hold on well, well, well we've tracked we have good down. people elvina she rocks we've tracked it down to sometime after the silver one <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Braidwood, Caridwin, and Mistress Rowena made in the early 1990s. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Between so her was, and Kushag, was, I guess that's what oh, they I came remember up with. the silver one. Yeah. yeah. So, this was so, to replace. So, the, if anybody the that's one. listening to this at any time has more history <laughs> on this, because I feel like we should know, and I feel terrible that we don't know. There's just so much um, incredible handwork on that. Oh, it's just yeah. really, it's really amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. And regalia is kind of my personal wonk. I love making it and I love seeing what people make for regalia. And that piece just has so much heart and soul sewn into it. Um, I think yeah. it's really special. Yeah, it's got the loat on one side and the lion's gator on the other. So it is a lion, uh. lion with the head of a, a alligator. And then the loat, which is a uh, from Warner Lope Park. It is the beast of the park, basically. And he has five legs or six legs. I can't remember. And multiple eyes. Yes. Um, and there's some discrepancy as to whether or not the load is basically the train. Oh my God, because there's a train that runs by. Oh my gosh, the load is coming. And it has the lights on the front of the train, which are the oh. why the load has multiple eyes. Um, but, you know, where the origin came from, who knows? Because there is some some um conflict about the story <laughs> but that seems to be what it is the load it was the train going past i'm Warner sure gerhard loved to just probably give this different answer every probably time. probably i can see that in him i have never heard about the lion gator before i think that is amazing yeah <laughs> yeah i wish you could see it better but yes the lion's yes, gator yeah, I, I, i'm totally in love with the texture on the tail too yeah. oh yeah i know right <laughs> yeah yeah that's really they did a gorgeous job. <laughs> very cool. Should I try to tip it up a bit? <laughs> oh, there, there we go. it is. Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. So they did an amazing job. Love it. That's awesome. It's yeah. Awesome. So have we not talked about something that you guys would like to talk about? Uh, so no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Just looking at our notes real quick. Yeah. Did did we say we were going to ask something that we missed? <laughs> um, I don't think so. No. We covered um, lots. We have one of our little dirty secrets is that um, we don't really script these. We just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. They're yeah. organic. <laughs> they are organic. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you've actually covered everything which has been amazing. And wait, back to the banner. This is Marwina. 
So she believes that Rowena and Cushag spearheaded it with um, Fiona, Margaret Hamilton, I believe, and Catron, which I already mentioned. Apparently the original one went missing at an event and was never found. And this is the one that was uh, made to, to replace it. To replace it. It's very whimsical. I love whimsy. So cool. Me too. It is. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time this evening and for um, sharing your stories with us. We really appreciate it. Thank well, you thank for having you us. very much. And I look forward to um, Crown. I will be contacting you about making up a fighter card for you. So fighter and <laughs> consort card. <laughs> so pick a picture that you like. Oh, all <laughs> Excellent. Right. <laughs> One of the big Sounds good. Oh yeah. The big <laughs> That's going to be legend. <laughs> you have to have a really big card though cuz to fit the big spear. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the cool thing to come out of sort of this last minute crown um is, you know, all this sort of digital and accessibility stuff for people that can't be there. Um yes. And, you know the the people that are working on um, you know the the streaming of of the crown are very creative, funny people. So I think it's going to be a hoot, and I hope it stays recorded so that I can watch it later. Well, and the nice thing yeah. is that uh, we actually did a trial at uh, Champions for our court. Uh, Nirgway had a, a, a great idea that. of having a a phone close with just doing audio, audio and streaming that so people at the back could yeah. listen to it and we actually had people who were late to the event that were listening to court on, on their the, way on, their phone on Zoom. to the event yeah and so, it, it allowed people to be socially distanced and be far back which of course yeah. we know is difficult to hear court at the best of times when we're all crunched together so brilliant idea on his part mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're just talking to Sean about that, about, you know, what you can do with a lavalier mic and a speaker. Yeah. 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 Lots of creative. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely hoping to see uh, some Bluetooth speakers at future events um, sure. so that we can be a little bit more accessible. Um, Rifkin, what do we have coming up next week? I think next week we have Holidora, right? Yep. Um, yeah, so she's uh, Holidora. Um, she is second generation SCA. She grew up in the SCA. She has some really, really cute pictures of her as a little kid um, at events. And uh, she is uh, the wife of, of Sir Otar. And she has three um, little boys that she's raising in the SCA. And I think it'll be really, really cool to talk to her. So awesome. that's and she next week. She has a very um, energetic and wonderful personality. So I'm really looking forward to sitting down with her. Yeah, and she's kind of a retinue wonk. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I can relate. Yeah, I haven't been a while. No, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody down south in a while. So Crown will be very, very interesting. It will be way. awesome. To see all the American people that we're missing too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're looking forward to it. I will be uh, at Crown via this space. <laughs> <laughs> Rifkin will be there in person. That works. Yeah, yay. I outed you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't hiding anything. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again for uh, all of your time and, and uh, for sharing your story. And thank, thank you, you everyone us. for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week and then and then for crown too. Um, so yeah, tune in. Woohoo! <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good night.